you know, this was a BS call. And, and they, they're even mentioning it here, Chris Sims. And so when you got like corporate NBC News mentioning this, that's how you know it was really a messed up call. Multiple defensive pass interference calls on Thanksgiving. Game on the line. Zay Jones gets behind. This isn't the Hail Mary protocol, which applies a different standard, even though the rule book doesn't have a Hail Mary subsection. D Derek Carr uncorks a deep pass, and uh, Bobby McCain beaten by Zay Jones. You can see it. You can see that whether it's the jersey or the black undershirt, you can see the pulling there. And and I've had people say, oh, it didn't impede him. It didn't affect him. What? Like, you see that? How does it not You're affect him? You see what the you pulling mean? of the jersey. Of course it affects him. Right. Messed right. up. Exactly. I mean, it could have affected his positioning to be able to catch that football right there. And again, someone they... is pulling on you while you're trying to focus on the hardest part of your job, which is tracking a ball that, that's... soaring through the sky. Someone is pulling you, and you've got to fight through that while you're trying to focus on making the catch. Of course it's affecting of you. Of course it is. And that's where, like, the, the average Joe Smiths of the world got to, like, realize, hey, dude, Zane Jones is a freakish athlete yeah yo i love how Flo florio's getting heated man i want to see more raider fans get heated about these calls and you want to know who else i want to see get more heated about these calls rich Bisaccia, bro get more heated about these calls we can't be having florio get more heated about these calls than the than the head coach and i know there's limits to what you can say but you could find a way to maneuver around it that's what Gruden would always do he would call out the refs. He'd find a way to do it without getting fined. He'd say, like, that was the weirdest call I've seen in a while, in my whole life. You know, make little comments like that. Call it out, bro. We need to call it out. Yeah, he's getting held and everything else, but he's, you know, he's a 6'2 wide receiver who's got strength and a freak. So, yeah, he can control his body a little bit better than Joe Smith, the plumber, who's running down the field if he had a jersey, ha you know, somebody pulling his jersey. But, but like, if you did that to anybody else, Again, schoolyard, high school football, whatever. Yeah, it affects you. And the, really, the base point is this. This is the base point, at least in, in my view. If that was the first quarter or the second quarter, there would have been 97 flags thrown for pass interference. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Just bad. Oh, oh, my gosh, pass interference. And that's where I think coaches and teams are frustrated because all of a sudden now we get to the last two or three minutes of the game and the game is refed a completely different way. And that's where I, I get annoyed, and, and I, I know that's really annoying a lot of coaches. Well, and, and you're absolutely right. The same standard should apply no matter when it happens. It's either a foul. That's, that's the, I like that comment that Chris Sims said. If it was in the beginning of the game, they would have called that flag straight up. Early in the game, maybe even the third quarter, and for some reason, when the NFL, you know, when it gets down to the wire, the the real the real intentions, I believe, of the NFL come out when it gets to the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, it's like, look, okay, at the end of the day, we wanted this team, we wanted this team to win, and so here here here, here we go. Uh, we're not going to call anything in favor of this team. We're going to see what happens. Yeah, we can't do anything blatant. We can't do anything blatant. But yo, this is the NFL. Like in the NFL, every team is equal. Like that's how the salary cap is is made, and that's why any given Sunday, any team could win. Really, the tipping point, and in my opinion, what makes the biggest difference is yes, these superstar players who you have on cheap deals that makes a huge difference. But to me, since the teams are so even due to the salary cap and how the NFL was designed, the refs the refs tip it in the fourth quarter, you know, in the way that they want it to go. Basically, that's why these games go down to the wire all the time. Yeah, sometimes when there's a shitty team like the Jaguars versus the Rams. And obviously the Jaguars have no incentive to win games at this point. I mean, they should they should literally just go. They should tank. So you have situations like that where you're going to get a blowout, of course, right? Of course. And sometimes I know the team could just be completely outmatched physically, uh, maybe injuries, or maybe you just don't have the talent, right? You just don't have the talent. But as far as coaching uh, and as far as how, how these teams usually match up, in my opinion, I really do believe that it's even most of the time. It's just calls like that, like that no call with the Zay Jones thing. To me, those make the biggest difference in the game. I mean, it's pretty much a tie game the whole time. If we get that call and the Raiders win the game... Nobody sh nobody's going to be crapping on the Raiders that week. Nobody's going to be talking that much crap. I mean, that's just straight up like how it goes with 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 the Chiefs situation where the the fumble not not called. You know, if this is called and the the Broncos maybe win this game, then we're not high and mighty on Mahomes. Maybe Mahomes doesn't get a State Farm commercial next year. <laughs> you know, like these things have a huge impact, and I think the league needs to get this together because at a certain point, people are going to say, "Hey, like, what's the point, bro? Like, if you're not going to call this straight up." Why am I going to gamble on this? You know, why am I going to risk so much? It's not right. It's not right at a certain point. Let me know what y'all think about that. Shout out to everybody here.
because the Chiefs are always benefiting from some bullshit. I will say that. I will say that right now. So in the Denver game, here's what the league claims. They claim that this was an incomplete pass, and after further review, they said that uh, you know Kelsey did not fully complete the, pro- complete the process of a catch because the third element of a catch, time, was not met. But time does not matter. Time does not matter. And this was reported by Florio on Pro Football Talk, and he just showed Mike Vrabel responded to this, Titans head coach. And you know this guy is not afraid to, to speak his mind. He just posted the rule, which goes contrary to what the NFL just said. Obviously, you got to secure the ball, blah, 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 when you make a catch, touch the ground inbounds. But here is the key element. After you touch the ground, touch the ground inbounds with both feet, A and B have been fulfilled, right? Then you got to perform an act common to the game, which includes tucking the ball away, extending it forward, turning up field, has nothing to do with time. Nothing to do with time. And when you watch this play, Travis Kelsey, so check this out. You got a, you got one foot, two foot here, football move, boom. Hits out of the hands just like that. That is a fumble. Uh, sorry I didn't show that immediately. Boom, boom, boom. According to Mike Vrabel and according to the written rule, so either you disagree with the written rule here or you're just like the Broncos got screw- screwed over there. Here's my thing. If that would have been the Raiders right there, They would have called that a fumble. You bet they call that a fumble, especially when they slow it down and they're like, well, he technically made a football move because he tucked it away. They would have called that a fumble, guaranteed. Let me know if you agree with that. And we freaking make all these assumptions and we make all these conclusions based on slowing down these plays. So why not when it happens to one of the darlings in the NFL? When it comes to them playing the Broncos, when it comes to Kelsey having a fumble, oh, there's tons of gray area, and we're not going to go according to the written rule.